Hi everyone, I'm Jerry from Snow Software. I've been designing and building systems in the cloud for more than a decade, and I created these videos to share my experiences with you. This video, the third in the Cloud Fundamentals series, is about the different compute options you can choose from in the cloud, like virtual machines, containers, and functions. Let's get started. Virtual machines, containers, and functions are the three primary compute options available today in the public cloud. These three options have significantly changed the way we approach modern application architecture and have really revolutionized how we treat the availability, scalability, and the cost of our applications in the cloud. As cloud practitioners, it's important that we understand what these three compute options are and that we're aware of the relative advantages and disadvantages of each. I'll cover each briefly, starting with virtual machines. Virtualization is the process of creating a software-based or virtual version of a computer, each one of those having dedicated amounts of CPU, memory, and storage that are borrowed from the actual physical host computer. That host computer can be a remote server in the cloud, or it could even be your personal computer. Virtual machines come in many shapes and sizes, some with more memory, some with more processing power, and others with special purpose hardware like GPUs. You choose based on your particular application and your business needs. In addition to choosing the amount of CPU and memory available to your application, when you create a virtual machine, you choose the operating system and location. And that location may be in one of many regions or geographies around the world, depending on where your cloud provider is located. Some of the advantages of virtual machines include cost efficiency. It's much more cost efficient for your cloud provider to buy a large system and partition it out into smaller systems than it is to buy smaller systems and maintain all of the associated infrastructure. You also get increased agility and speed. It's very quick to spin up new virtual machines. You don't need to wait for a procurement cycle um, to happen before you can actually see hardware. In addition, you get increased availability. You can have multiple levels of redundancy and portability across your system, which reduces downtime. And it's very easy to replicate your systems to create high levels of scalability. One of the disadvantages of virtual machines is they're not very portable. So if you create a virtual machine with one cloud provider, it's unlikely that it will just run on another cloud provider system. Some examples of virtual machines on different cloud providers are Amazon's Elastic Cloud Compute or EC2, Azure Virtual Machines, and Google Compute Engine. Now let's talk about containers. So containers are, are really an abstraction at the application layer that packages code and dependencies together, as opposed to a hardware virtualization like virtual machines are. So, uh, so multiple containers can run on the same machine and share the same operating system with other containers, each of them running as an isolated process. In contrast to virtual machines, containers virtualize the underlying operating system and the containerized applications perceive that they have the operating system, including CPUs, memory, file storage, et cetera, all to itself. Containers can be deployed and run anywhere, making them extremely portable and attractive as they can be run either on uh, premises or in the cloud. Containers share the same host OS, and they don't need to boot an OS or load libraries, making them very efficient and, and lightweight. Containerized applications can start in, um, in seconds, and many more instances of an application can fit onto a machine as compared to virtual machines. The shared operating system approach has uh, the added benefit, too, of reducing overhead when it comes to maintenance like patching and updates. So you really build it once and you can run it just about anywhere. Cloud providers provide managed container orchestration services, or you can manage them yourself on VMs. Advantages of containers, as I mentioned, include increased agility. So very quick to develop and build and package application into containers and then provide them 
uh, to your IT department to run on standardized platforms. So it reduces the overall effort to build and deploy applications and can really streamline the dev test deploy cycle. Containers are, are built to be portable. They're, uh, they provide a standardized format for packaging and for holding all of the necessary components to run your application. And so it kind of solves that problem of it works on my machine. You can run your container on your machine. You can run it in dev. You can run it in test across those environments and also run it across production environments and different clouds. Containers also have the advantage of very rapid scalability. So containers don't have the overhead that's typical of virtual machines, which includes the operating system and booting the operating system. It makes them very lightweight and they can be started and stopped very quickly, meaning that you can very rapidly scale up and scale down your application when you need to. You can manage your own container engine and your own containers, or you can use one of the provider managed orchestration engines. Examples of managed container services include Amazon ECS or EKS, Oracle Container Engine for Kubernetes, Azure Kubernetes Service, or Google Kubernetes Engine. Finally, let's talk about functions. Functions or functions as a service allow you to develop and run and manage applications without having to build or maintain the underlying infrastructure. So you don't have to worry about the operating systems. You don't have to worry about the, uh, the host hardware itself. Hosting a uh, software app on the internet usually requires you to provision and manage a virtual machine or a container and then manage the operating system and the web server with functions, the hardware and the virtual machine, the web server software are all, are all handled automatically by your cloud service provider. This means you can focus entirely on the individual functions in your application code. Some of the advantages of functions include, as I mentioned, allowing the ability to focus more on code and not on infrastructure with uh, functions, you divide your application or your service into smaller components that then can be scaled automatically and independently. So you don't really have to manage that infrastructure. With cloud functions, you really pay only for those resources that you use when you use them. This is like others, but with functions, you really only pay for them when they're executing or when an application or when an action occurs. When the action is done, everything stops, no code is running, there's no, there are no idle servers uh, to pay for, and so there's no cost incurred. So functions are, are very cost effective, especially for dynamic workloads or for scheduled tasks. With functions, you can also scale up or scale down automatically. Uh, depending on the workload. When you have additional tasks that need to be done, capacity increases, more functions can be executed. When there's no demand, functions automatically scale back down. In addition, you get all the benefits of being cloud native. So you get all of the cloud infrastructure components underneath those functions, and it, which includes you know, in, uh, increased availability, um, spreading functions across multiple availability zones and geographic regions. All of the benefits of being in the cloud are available to you through functions. Examples of functions on public cloud include AWS Lambda, Azure Functions, IBM Cloud Functions, and Google Cloud Functions. Those are the three primary types of compute available to you in the cloud, virtual machines, containers, and functions. In my next video, I'll talk more about the different cost options available for cloud compute, including spot, on-demand, and reserved. I hope you'll join me for that video. As always, if you have any comments, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, where I'm known as AWS Geek, and be sure to visit snowsoftware.com. Thanks.